opens a transparent trade in Europe, cutting EU red tape. Europe needs reform. Hello everybody and welcome to Strasbourg uh, for my March video blog. I'm not going to talk about uh, the EU referendum today. <laughs> you, maybe you'll be pleased to hear about that. I'm going to talk about business as usual because of course that's what we MEPs have to do here in, in Strasbourg. And at this session there's been some very important debate, uh, particularly around the Turkey EU agreement on refugees and the treatment of, of migrants, which has caused a, a lot of discussion. Um, many people believe that this is the answer and uh, obviously this will be something quite expensive in terms of the EU paying um, Turkey to, to uh, work on our behalf. Um, some people think it's not going to last. Let's see. I, I really hope it does because I think it's a, an extremely uh, sensible way of dealing with the issues of the EU's external border. Um, I've been looking on my environment committee uh, this time at a very special issue and that's around thalidomide. Um, those of us of a certain age of course we remember and Although there were only 500, and I think it's 531 declared victims of thalidomide that received compensation in the UK, there were undoubtedly many, many more. Uh, many families suffered miscarriage, stillbirth, uh, without really ever it being acknowledged that it was a thalidomide issue. And whilst um, thalidomide victims have um, received compensation uh, in the UK, they have never received acknowledgement from the German company involved that they had liability and indeed uh, for many of them life in their 50s is becoming very very difficult because the compensation simply was not um, it wasn't calculated on on a lifetime um, and we would like we British Conservatives are, are part of the campaign to make sure that that is acknowledged and we've got a discussion in Parliament this afternoon that I'll be speaking in uh, trying to make uh, the German government and the German pharmaceutical industry accept their responsibility. It does seem strange doesn't it that we should be talking about this 50 years later but it is still a live issue. The other important thing we've been doing is uh, some legislation on veterinary medicines which are regulated at European level. Veterinary medicines is something I'm very, very keen on because A, I don't think enough money goes into research on veterinary medicines. Uh, I would like to see more and if drug companies aren't prepared to do it because there isn't the return they need, then it's one of the things which the European Investment Bank should be looking at investing in. And why do I think so? Well, I think we increasingly, particularly with antibiotics and antimicrobials, we have to make sure that we're not using the same um, medicine as we're using for humans. We all know about antimicrobial resistance and the problems that's causing in our hospitals and uh, it, it's very important that we, we make sure that uh, we've got a suite of drugs which are kept for the worst kinds of human infections so that they remain effective. But we must make sure that we have also a suite of drugs which is suitable for our livestock because part of animal welfare is making sure that they remain healthy and fit and this has been a main aim of um, this veterinary meds um, legislation. So on that note I say thank you for listening and uh, maybe we will return to the referendum in April. Uh, as you know the papers are full of it and I think I'll make some comments at that point of how, how the debate is going. Thank you very much.